Before we can actually look at circuits and actually build them, we need to think about their representation. And a lot of electrical engineering has to do with schematics. Schematics, the idea where you can see a diagram and visualize what the actual circuit looks like. Okay, it's a representation or a model. We talked about modeling in physics in the beginning of the year. This is an example of that today. We're going to have four objectives. We're going to interpret and construct schematics, discuss an open versus closed circuit. We're going to relate potential differences or potential difference in circuits. And we're going to study the workings of a light bulb to see how a light bulb actually works. All right, let's take a look. First, as a reminder, and we talked about this last class, this diagram needs to be like just instilled in your mind. The amount of potential energy that each charge is carrying is very high when it comes out of the battery. Then it goes through the light, and that potential energy is converted into what kind of energy? Kinetic. Heat or light. light. Kinetic can be working, that's fine, it's moving. But generally, heat and light energy is given off. So the potential energy, when it gets to B, drops dramatically. Okay, when it crosses this resistor, or what's called a load-bearing element. We'll talk about what that means today. So it drops. It then moves over to point D, and when it hits point D, it rises up back again by the time it gets to point A. It gains potential energy from the chemical energy that's stored in the battery. Okay? This is going to come up again and again, so this needs to be in your head. Is that clear so far? Any questions about this? So technically, we can consider it when it's in the battery. It like charged. Low. Oh, when it's sorry, when it's moving I mean, through so the battery, the low. When it's up in the it's up in the air when it's in the battery. I mean by potential kinetic energy. When it's in the battery, like here at terminal D, it's got no potential, so it's like on the ground. Then okay. getting to A, it's like it's rising it up to a cliff. Then from A, when it goes through B to C, it's like it's falling down to the ground. Okay, falling down to the ground. Uh, Look at it this, way, Jeff. Look at it this way. It's like on a cliff. Okay, it's still on a cliff until it gets to here. Really, right? Then it falls down to the ground. It falls, fall? the energy falls from B to C because all that energy goes into light and heat. So it's like a conservation again. Remember, all the potential energy in a free fall would be converted to kinetic when it falls to the ground. Well, in this case, when it crosses this resistor here as a light bulb, the potential energy is converted to light and heat, so the potential energy drops. Okay, it drops to zero pretty much. And what happens from okay? C to D? Then from C to D, while it's in the wire, these are like empty charge carriers. They have no energy at all, but they're still getting pushed along until they get to D. When they get to D, they have this interaction with the chemicals, which raise their energy back up to where it was. Okay, it's a cyclic process. Oh, so this is technically going on like in the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is going on like, and you can't really see it happening, Jeff. What's going on? Exactly. Is there a difference between those light bulbs and like neon? And like neon? No, he means like. Well, certain new types of light bulbs don't give off heat. Some of them have different applications. I don't know too much about specific new types like halogens and neons. We're going to look at the workings of a standard light bulb today. Where they don't get brighter over the time, or they do. Yeah, when you turn it on, it's like initially not bright, and soon it eventually brightens up. I'm guessing it has to do with some sort of a variable resistance. Remember, we talked about a pentiometer, a variable resistor. A variable resistance would cause the different light to change. So maybe the resistance is very low, then the resistance keeps increasing as a function of time for the first minute or two, and then it steadies out. Possibly, I don't know for sure though. So maybe research that and get back to us. You could help. Okay? There's probably a very simple explanation that I might not happen to know. Okay? Now, the next thing to look at. We do. Next Friday. Yep. And that's also in the email. I put that in there. I mentioned So you know. I put a reminder in the email as well, so it's in there if you check. Now, write down the definition, please. A schematic diagram is a visual representation of an electric circuit using standardized symbols for circuit components. And this example you see here is very obvious, but we'll talk about all the symbols today. Okay, but this is just an example. So a schematic is a model. It's a model. It's all it is. Okay? It takes what we physically see 
and it gives it a representation that anyone can interpret. I can draw this like this, and any engineer in the world will tell you, that's a battery, that's a resistor, that's a resistor, without even having the R1 and R2 over them. Okay, that's the, that, that squiggly line there represents resistance, or the slowing down of motion, like we saw with the drift velocity, we drew that line. This shows the two terminals. The larger of them is the positive, the smaller is the negative. We'll go into all these symbols. But do you understand what I'm getting at here? Yes. Yeah, what yeah. a schematic is. It's symbolic okay, idea. symbolic representation. What's the, What's the science behind black lights? What's the science behind black lights? And how like, they can show writing. Is it like a normal light bulb? Like, uh, like, uh, I'm not sure actually, it? Fernando. I really don't know that one. Know like we can look it up. I've read it before, but I don't recall it off the top of my head. I remember reading something like just a chemical inside, like a lot of like I'll look it up, or maybe you can look it up and get back to us. I don't know. So again, a wire, guys, a wire connects the elements, has negligible resistance. Negligible resistance. The symbol is just a line. Second, a resistor, okay? A resistor, also known as a load-bearing element. Your book calls it a circuit load, that's fine. Load-bearing element mean, means... Guys, yeah, stop. Load-bearing element means that it can have a potential difference across it and that there's going to be some sort of resistance to that. Now, a resistor is the squiggly line here. Okay, your book also shows another one that I got rid of because I've never seen it before and you'll see a squiggly line here. Okay? There's multiple bends showing that there's resistance to motion. That's why the multiple bends are there. So a light bulb is a type of resistor. So in the next example, take a look at a light bulb. Don't you see the little resistor inside of it? But then there's a circle around it to show that it's a resistor, but specifically it's a light bulb as a resistor. So they put a circle around that resistor. Uh, multiple bends are the filament. And we'll talk about what a filament is, some of you know already. Why is there a what? Now, this, I said it like three times, listen. The symbol of the filament, okay? It's enclosed in a circle just to emphasize that it's a light bulb and not just a resistor. Without the circle, that's the resistor showing that motion that's slowed down. This is another version of it. We're going to use this first column here. Again, we're going to be using the symbols here. These are some additional ones that you see. Okay? Not necessarily needed. What's an example of a resistor? That's not a light bulb? Yeah. An air conditioner. Anything that uses some sort of electricity has resistance in it. So this projector has resistance in it. Your computer is a resistor. You can look at the overall, what's called equivalent resistance of a computer by combining the many resistors that are in it. And that's what we're going to talk about in the next. And this is the symbol that occurs for each resistor. The light bulb has a symbol piece. So, so why do we need a different size of the light bulb? It's just indicating a light source. It has to be a resistor that's very... You know, so like other symbols specific. Are there are other ones, but for the sake of here, we're going to look at light bulbs and basic resistors. Yeah. Okay, so it's not passive. Okay. Yeah. All right, next. <laughs> next. Okay. After the light bulb, we have a plug. Okay, a plug is a circle with two different sized lines indicating the prongs on the plug. Okay, that's all it is. Now, a plug is like a battery in the sense that it's going to provide some sort of voltage. Okay, some sort of voltage. Uh, two questions. First, is there resistance in a plug? There is, but it's negligible. We'll talk about that. And second, um, there's about a, in some like those plugs, you have like a big one and a small one, it's moving at the same size. What's the difference? Anybody know, honestly? Okay, it's like not a, Why are the problems different sizes of plugs? Uh, uh, probably to get more charge. Um, to get more different charge. sizes. I think it's, so we can only put it in one way. Yeah. Oh, that's so long. Um, can you even get our answer? I said it in one way. I'm not sure that's what I was asking. I know why the third prong is there. What's the third prong there for? I know that one. I don't know why. the third prong? It's called a? Grounding. Very good. 
the crown is wrong. I think it's because um, in the US, we <laughs> had direct current initially, before they invented the alternating current. So then you can only put it in one way. It wasn't even so that before, so before I like in Europe, where they developed the electrical <laughs> center, they already started with alternating current, and they just had um, yeah. universal. Is this like classic? So 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 no, that makes sense. Um, for a long time, we had only equivalent size problems in the US, and then eventually, we turned to different sizes. Guys, these are great questions. Black light. Why are the products different sizes? <laughs> All by Fernando de Mars. Who's that kid? What was your question? You asked earlier. Next up, research. Fluorescent light. Guys, these are good questions. These kinds of things are things that, if I don't have the answer to, what should you really do? Research. Yeah. Yeah. Do some research on them, okay? I wish I knew every answer. I don't know every answer. Electrical uh, engineering was not my thing. I'll be honest. Uh, you were uh, about, like, uh huh. When, like, with outlets and plugs, you're not paying for it until you plug it in, right? But yes, no, yes. When you plug in something, when you plug it in, okay. No matter what, guys, when you plug something in, electricity is flowing. When you turn it on, more electricity is flowing. That's why they say to unplug your appliances when you leave your house. I don't do that, honestly, just because of the fact that it's annoying. Imagine going around your house every day and unplugging every plug, okay? It's kind of absurd. Yeah. We're going to talk about those today, short circuits, what they are also. We should do an experiment and see how much money you could actually save. By unplugging and stuff? Oh, there's already, they've had, they've done that, yeah, many times. We could do it, though, for sure. Now, a battery, a battery, folks, listen, is this symbol right here? No, 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 no. Alright, guys, stop. Now, here, for the battery, you have uneven lengths. The uneven lengths are just representing the fact that there's a potential difference there, okay? The larger line is a positive, the shorter line is a negative. Always, always, always. Okay? So there's a positive terminal and a negative terminal. Now, because there's a potential difference, remember, the potential difference is what causes the electrons to flow and then come back into the battery and get recharged. A switch, a switch, we know what a light switch does, right? What does it do? Turns it on or off, right? But you know what? That's a misnomer. <laughs> it's a misnomer. Why? Yeah, so again, turning a light on closes the circuit. It allows the circuit to move. Turning a light off opens the circuit. So when people say open the switch, it actually means to turn the light off. It's completely counterintuitive, okay? It's completely counterintuitive. <laughs> okay? You know the new iPhone, like, five chargers and the iPad chargers? The storm thing? Yeah, the, the weird ones that they... They're smaller now. Yeah. You plug it in and stick it on your tongue and get it out your Oh, I can imagine. Really? Same thing with a 9-volt so battery. So cool. Take a 9-volt battery, you'll feel the current going through your, through your tongue. You have the Mac charger, too. <laughs> <laughs> now, guys, come on, focus. These circles are indicating where there's contact with the switches. So that circle there and that circle are coming from here. These circles down here, okay, these circles down here are coming from there and there. All right, so a closed circuit means that there is electricity flowing. An open circuit means that there is no electricity flowing because there's no contact. Sure, but you're going to hear open and closed always, so just get used to it. Okay? But you can't say that, Jeff. Fernando. In a car, when you put the key into the... Uh, ignition? Ignition. Is that electricity? Or is that... No. Um, well, okay. It does sense it, yeah. It does sense it, and there probably is a little bit of electrical flow there. But it's probably just like a little light sensor also. I don't know. Jack, do you know? 
Well, I mean, how did, when how you does turn it, it, that's when the actual spark. Sure, that, that's turning the alternator and stuff. I mean, like, if you put the key in, then the light. What is it sensing? Is there a light sensor in there, or is it, is it electric current? Any idea? Uh, yeah. Just people aren't even caring. Really. I don't know. It might depend on the person. I'm not sure, Fernando. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. Yeah, it's not. 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 It's and then they're sucking the floor, speaking of uh, this little like that's not the important part. No, he wants to make that too. <laughs> the important part is that he, like, like gas is going. So there's like a flow of gas caused by electricity. Gas is flowing when he just puts the car, the key in? Yeah. Well, that's the point. One is, like, the flow of gas in the car is that caused by electricity. It's caused by a lot more than just that. It's combustion that's happening there. It's not a flow of gas. Gas is not really flowing. There's combustion that's occurring. You want to explain this as far as how, how an actual combustion chamber works in a car? He's asking, is it the gas flowing? And I'm trying to explain. It's not really like flowing well, I mean, like, and stuff. It's combustion. You're seeing like the pistons. spark is down there, and then, well, like the gas is in there in the chamber, and then once you put the. Chamber of secrets? That's what the spark plug is for, and then you create a spark, and then the spark ignites a little bit of the gas, and then the gas causes the piston to go down. Turns a crankshaft, which turns the motor, and then turns the axles. It's a whole, you know, it's not just like it's just gas. Yeah, like switch. Let's okay, now, definition of electric circuit. This is straight out of your book. A set of electrical components. Can, I'm not going to give you guys time to write this when you ask me for time, so you need to write. Let's go. Connected to provide one or more complete paths for the movement of charge. Now, a circuit consists of two things. That's it. It could have many more than two. It could have 20. But any circuit must have these two things. First, a potential difference, which is like your battery, the source of energy. And a load-bearing element. So anything that dissipates energy, like a light bulb or an air conditioner or... You know, even a wire, believe it or not, but that's not a good circuit. That's a short circuit. We'll talk about that. So a simple example is on the right there. The battery, okay, the battery shows up here. The light bulb shows up here. There's your potential difference. There's your load-bearing element. That's it. That's what a circuit consists of. Okay, any questions on that so far? Uh, when, you, when you just said sh short circuits, you know when, like, the lights... Yeah, we're going to talk about a short circuit, so... I was going to ask... Blue the fuse or, like... Give me, give me a minute, okay? Well, I want to get into a light bulb before I do that because there's a reason. Now, please write down that a closed circuit, a closed circuit occurs when there is a connection and electricity flows, okay? That's what a closed circuit is. <clears throat> yeah, that's what we said a minute ago, but just make sure you write that down. Okay? So a closed circuit occurs... When there's a connection between the potential difference and the load-bearing element, these two things, okay, and electricity is flowing. So you could have a, a potential difference that is dead, like a dead battery. If the battery is dead, the electrons are not going to get charged and they're not going to carry any potential. So if you have a dead battery and a load-bearing element, that's not really a good circuit because you need a source of energy. It's got to have energy in it. Guys, a lot of these things, that, my guess, and this is an educated guess just from studying, is the moisture. The moisture that's there. So it's corroding. It's corroding with the metal on the outside of the surface. You're not always getting acid coming out, but you're getting some sort of a chemical reaction, an oxidation problem between the metal and the air around it. Okay? Yeah, a lot of these questions, guys, I saw, I'm sorry, you know. You know I told you I studied mechanical. So this is new stuff. Building is not, that's a thermal reaction. All right, for this one, for this one, this is something that I'm probably not going to test you on the exact steps of each, but you need to know the general idea. Okay, so let's go through this. Can I get a reader, please? My point, my point. Right. Paul, nice to know. Step A current enters the light bulb through the base contact location. Start over. Part A, current enters the light bulb through the base contact location. Yes, that black line. I'll draw actually. Like, it looks like a person's head. Part B. 
So that was part A. Good, Paul. Go ahead. Part B. Charge pa charges pass through the filament and are converted to thermal, not all bulbs here. And light giving off heat and, and light? Uh, give off uh, heat. Because remember, earlier you asked the question. Oh, no, that was Olivia that asked that. Oh, Olivia. Yeah, so not all of them give off your heat now. We know that. A lot of light bulbs don't give off any heat at all. Okay? Or minimal heat. Negligible. Continue from B. Uh, the charges now to lower potential energy that travel from sun filament and back out to the side of the metal socket. Okay? So the contact point here is what's interesting. The bottom of the light bulb has this little metal circular tiny disc. That's where the flow is entering the light bulb. It passes through the filament. Due to conservation of energy, the energy then changes. Okay? Let's pause for a second. Anyway, so the light bulb has two components that are really important right now. First, the bottom of it has two parts. The circular disc down here touches this contact, which allows flow to come in. Okay? The metal on the side of the light bulb serves a purpose also. That's where it touches the side of the socket and allows the flow to go out. And the filament is what turns that light into heat, uh, that energy into heat and light. How is this physics? <coughs> How? Like it's a circuit. It's electrical engineering. It's a circuit. Like it. Yeah, I don't like when it gets in water. Yeah, well, I do. I didn't like it. Like now. Like now. Like guys, come on. Focus. What you talking about today? If. If these two wires. Come on, guys. Focus. If these two wires somehow touched, if they accidentally touched, here's what would happen. You would go from a circuit that looks like this. Here's the current circuit. Okay? With a battery or a source of energy and a light bulb. And this is what it would look like now. Because if these two wires touch, now the flow would go through the wires and would never enter the light bulb. Okay, these, look down here, I'm pointing at this. <laughs> so these two wires here, this is the lead wire, this is the wire coming out. Now, if somehow they touched, it would cause the flow to go between them and not go through the light bulb, which would cause the circuit to no longer have a load-bearing element. So where would that electrical charge go? It would actually heat up this wire which could cause the wire to melt and then start to burn, no. which is where a short circuit happens. Oh. So, that, oh, so a short circuit, oh. listen, a short circuit is when the load-bearing element comes out of the situation and the circuit just connects with the battery and there's too much energy and it heats up and it starts to burn and it can burn stuff down. Okay. Is that where it, uh, you, know, like you turn on a light and turn it off? Yes, You're a little short yes, though. <laughs> what is it? It's usually the contact points here or, or the contact points in the prongs that are in the element. But, um, but also, what, what is happening when the hole dies? Like that, that just has to do with like that. How? Like, you know, when like a uh, light bulb dies eventually, it takes over time. The film overheats and it, it itself burns out. Okay. It burns, literally. You'll see it's black smoke, it poops yeah. out of it. Yeah. It's yeah. black smoke. It so burns out of it. Too much heat. During the metro? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yep. The film it overheated. Okay. So you said in the second little diagram that you drew, they're not they're touching because there's no reactor in the middle? No, imagine because look, here's a wire molly coming in here from an outlet. Here's a wire that's leading out of the light bulb. So there's energy coming in here, okay, going through the bulb, then out, and then it completes the circuit. Now imagine, though, that there was some shortcut along the way that this path took right here, instead of going through the light bulb. Now the light bulb doesn't exist, and now it's a circuit without a load-bearing element. Okay, Jeff. Uh, can people do that to start, like, fake fires? Well, have you ever seen somebody, like, start a car, like, you know, no, sitting there with a circuit? Oh, sure. they're, they're shorting it in this sense there, yeah. They're, they're changing the loop with the flow of electricity. So, like, you could, you could burn someone's house down by making a short circuit. Eight, four, five, 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 No, it, it's not, they could find out fire and stuff. There are ways. Yeah, but they wouldn't know that you could be short. Stop plotting. Now, last thing. EMF, EMF, 
EMF, I'm not going to give you the name for an EMF simply because of the fact that it is counterintuitive as to what it is. Okay, just know it as EMF. And believe it or not, I'm actually serious here. It's not worth looking up what it stands for. I know what it stands for, but don't because it's going to make you think of something else. Electromagnetic okay? frequency. No, it's not. Now, it's a source of energy. A source of energy that can cause a current to flow in an electrical circuit. Now, it's basically like a battery. It's like a battery, but here's the difference. Here's the difference. There's a small amount of resistance in a battery. There's inherent existence in the actual battery itself that we consider negligible. But really, it is there. Okay? And simply due to that, we can say that the terminal voltage is a little bit less than the EMF. The EMF is like the energy the battery provides. But because there's a little resistance, the amount of energy that's coming out is really slightly less than the energy provided. So say it's a 9-volt battery, you're really only going to get 8.9 volts out of it. That's what I'm getting at. And you'll see this. We're going to use something called a, a voltmeter to measure the voltage. And a 9-volt battery will not really give 9 volts because of the fact that part of it is being lost to that small internal resistance. Okay? It's not. It's not electromagnetic force. No, it's not. It's a, that's another, there's a, this is EMF lowercase. That's different. That's capital EMF. Now, from conservation of energy, we can say that the voltage across the battery is the same as the voltage across any resistor. So, if you have a 9, you need to write this down. If you have a 9 volt battery, then 9 volts are going across the light bulb. Okay? 9 volts are going across the light bulb. Conservation of energy. Okay? Conservation of energy. Yeah. We're going to do it in the lab. You see it? The same thing. Yeah, you have some sort of supply of energy. There is technically, it's like a battery, but it's like a, it's a capacitor and a generator stores energy and stuff. So you don't lose any volts in the air? Nine volts, what? Yeah, it's it goes into the light bulb. I just can't hear you, sir. Sorry. I can't hear you. Any of the voltage is lost? There is minimal loss in the wires, but we assume that the wires have negligible resistance again, remember? Okay. There's always going to be some loss. Um, Superconductor. Alright, so again, to summarize, wires and batteries do have some resistance, but they're considered to be negligible. But in real life, what you're going to see is that a 9-volt battery, when you measure its voltage, you're only going to probably get like 8.99 or 8.95 volts out of it because of that minimal resistance. But in math and in class, we're going to consider that to be negligible. Okay? Negligible. Masha. So we have a battery connected here, and this is a close-up of what the battery really is. So the battery really has the battery, but there is a little resistance. That's what this is showing in the battery. Okay? This diagram here is like the battery itself, what it really should look like. So if you completed the circuit, the circuit really looks like this. Okay, here's the battery really, Masha. This is the battery, and I'll circle it in red. There's really a little bit of resistance, but it's negligible. So we don't show this resistance in our circuits. So really, we can replace that with just a simple blue line there. Okay, it's negligible, the resistance. But re in reality, there is a little resistance. Just like a wire has a little resistance in it, really, but we say it's negligible. Okay, please take a look at these problems. Okay, have a great day.